So I'm here to tell you about quantum computers, a new frontier of technology that will profoundly change what we're capable of. Sydney is at the cutting edge of this new technology, with research groups and companies all over the world working to push out the boundaries of what we can do. But I'm also here to tell you about invention, because pushing out those boundaries takes many breakthroughs, both big and small, from many people across many organizations. And anybody can study science or engineering, get involved, be on the frontier, and do things that have never been done before. Here's a picture of my first invention. It might not look like much, but this was something that had never been done before, something that was totally new. I took on this project when I was near the end of my engineering degree. I found these people at the university working on quantum computers, and they had this problem that they gave me as a project. They needed this way to add together these two electrical signals at a much faster rate and at really low temperatures. So I looked at this project, and I'll admit that my first thought was, that doesn't seem that hard. Like, surely that's been done before, right? Well, fast forward a couple of months of me trawling through my textbooks and then searching research papers and then getting a bit desperate and searching through patents. Eventually, I realized that there wasn't a solution out there. Nobody had done this yet. So I had to go at it. I tried one idea. It didn't work. I tried another idea, which was pretty much totally hopeless. But on the third try at it, I was onto something. So I built this thing. I tested it. It had to work at really low temperatures. So I dunked it in liquid nitrogen and tested it again, and everything worked. I couldn't believe it. I, I, and it could add together those two electrical signals over 100 times faster than what was possible before. So I pulled it out of the liquid nitrogen and watched it frosting up on the bench, and I thought, gee, like, this has never been done before. This thing is totally new. And it was so satisfying to see this thing work after months of not knowing how to do it. So this got me interested. I, I finished my university degree, and I, I got into research. I started working with these guys in quantum computing. And what I found was heaps of problems like this, things that hadn't been solved yet. And what's more, I found a team of brilliant people who were solving these problems all the time. Problems would get solved, and we'd find new problems that hadn't even been attempted yet. I found out that it's so exciting to be on the cutting edge of new technology, because so often, when you need to solve a new problem, you can't just look up how to do it. You've got to be creative and invent something new. The thing that really drew me, though, was that these weren't just inventions by themselves. They were small problems to solve on the way to solving one really big problem. How do we build a quantum computer? We now know that this is one of the new technologies that will change our world. And there's a race going on right now around the globe to see who will be the first to make one. There have been a few technology revolutions over the past few hundred years, like electricity, automobiles, television, computers, or the internet. Or big exploratory projects, like getting to the moon and back. These have been our frontiers. And quantum computing will be one of the frontiers of our generation. The thing that makes quantum computers special is their ability to solve problems that are impossible to solve with classical computers. Now, classical computers are the ones that we use today. 
in our pockets, on our desktops, and in our data centers. But did you know that there are certain types of problems that even the most powerful supercomputers in the world will grind to a halt trying to solve them? I'll now just give you a brief explanation of the difference between a quantum system and a classical system. And then I'll try to explain why we need a quantum system to solve these problems that a classical system can't solve. So, quantum mechanics. So, to some approximation, quantum mechanics is a way to describe things that are very small. Things much smaller than what we can see with our own eyes. So, see this tennis match. This is a normal sized tennis match. We can clearly see the ball and the players and the crisp white lines on the court. We can see exactly where everything is and how fast it's going. But now, imagine a microscopic tennis match, one billion times smaller. So small that the ball is a single electron. Now it's harder to see where the ball is and how fast it's going. It's become this sort of yellow smudge. See, when you get down to the scale of single particles and atoms, you don't get the exact locations of things anymore. They start to blur out. This isn't because we don't have accurate enough instruments to measure them. It's not because the umpire of our microscopic tennis match needs a new pair of glasses. It's because the particles themselves start to blur out. An interesting phenomenon that can happen down at this scale is that when these particles start to blur out, they start being able to exist in several locations at the same time. We call this a state of superposition, where something can be in two places or two states at the same time. But it gets stranger from there. Say if I'm one of the players of this tennis match. I hit the ball across the court towards my opponent, but I hit it in a superposition of both going to the left and the right side of my opponent's court at the same time. Now, disregard how unfair this tennis match is for a moment. What does my opponent do about it? Say my opponent picks the left side. If the ball goes left, he'll hit it back. If the ball goes right, he'll miss it. But something interesting has happened here. The ball was in a superposition, but now my opponent is in a superposition of both hitting the ball back and missing it. And his state depends on the state of the ball. This is a simplified description of quantum entanglement. Now, Quantum entanglement is at the heart of what makes a quantum computer special. It's the thing that allows a quantum computer to simulate a quantum system, but impossible for a classical computer to do the same thing. Now, to give you an example of a quantum system that we might like to simulate, consider a chemical reaction. Deep down, a chemical reaction depends on the interactions between atoms and molecules and electrons. But these are quantum mechanical interactions. If you want to know whether two elements or compounds will react with each other, you have to understand precisely these quantum mechanical interactions. To understand them precisely, you need to simulate them. But to simulate these quantum interactions, you need a quantum computer. Now, being able to simulate a quantum system would allow us to do many things that we can't currently do, like simulate a new medicine inside the human body, or design new materials and compounds from the ground up, atom by atom. But this capability could allow us to do much more than classical computers currently can in other areas, like optimization, finance, AI and machine learning, or photography. Quantum computers could potentially break most of the encryption that we currently use to secure our data, 
like the amount of money in our bank accounts or the contents of our emails. If for nothing else, these implications for cryptography already have our governments and financial institutions getting involved in the race for the first quantum computers. But there are many possible applications, and one of the exciting things is that it's impossible to imagine all of the ways that we'll be able to use quantum computers in the future. Back in the mid-20th century, when computer scientists were designing the first classical computers, could they have imagined all of the ways that we use computers and the internet today? The people getting involved in developing quantum computers right now, these are the people that will be the enablers of these advances in capability, the people that push the frontier forwards. Now, I'd like to talk about some of the organizations that are involved in this development. There are people all over the world working on different aspects of quantum computing, and they range from small university research groups all the way up to enormous tech giants like Google, IBM, and Intel. Everybody working on quantum computers is making a contribution that helps us progress, but at the same time, everybody's a part of the race trying to get there first. Now, as for what's happening in Sydney, there are a few different ways to build a quantum computer. Our team at the University of New South Wales specializes in silicon. We make quantum bits or qubits which are the fundamental building blocks of a quantum computer out of single electrons in silicon. To do this, we use the same technology that's used to power our phones and laptops today. Now, wrangling single electrons might seem pretty out there compared to the things that we see in everyday life, but with the right tools, it's perfectly doable. Finding a single electron and controlling it and measuring it is something that we do every day. If there's ever a way to make sense of the mysteries of quantum mechanics, it's to see its effects with your own eyes. In fact, when a new student joins our team to run experiments, one of the first things that we get them to do is measure the movement of single electrons in one of our devices. I thought this was super cool when I got to do it for the first time. Um, now, like any good frontier, we are diving out into the unknown to some extent. We've taken on a challenge that looks really difficult, but it does also look like something that we can do. Along the way to getting there, there'll be lots of breakthroughs from lots of people across lots of organizations. And you can be the people that make these breakthroughs. Not all of these inventions, the breakthroughs along the way, will come from the aged and experienced professors of quantum physics. They'll come from the new minds getting involved now, the minds that bring new perspectives. You don't have to be an expert now. You just have to work hard, learn as much as you can, and start tackling the unsolved problems. I find it really exciting to be at the cutting edge of technology because solving these problems pushes our boundaries forwards. And Sydney is at the cutting edge of this new technology with research groups and companies all over the world. Sydney is at the cutting edge, leading the world. Some of these results came right out of Sydney. Some of the first qubits in silicon in the world were developed right here in Sydney. The first two qubit logic gate in silicon was developed right here in Sydney. We recently set the records for the most accurate one and two qubit logic gates right here in Sydney. It was young researchers that made these breakthroughs. People showing that a bit of curiosity and vision will take us a long way. 
Some of the leading universities in Sydney have also now teamed up to form the Sydney Quantum Academy, which aims to provide the best possible opportunities to the next generation of quantum researchers. So I'd invite anyone to study science or engineering, get involved, be on the frontier, and do things that have never been done before. Thank you.